Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Word of Colors. Welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm broadcasting from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm on uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and uh, uh, Twitter. And uh, I'm in my studio today with my wife, Gloria. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so if you're on YouTube or uh, Facebook uh, and... Uh, uh, what's the other one? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yay, LinkedIn. Uh, hey, give me... Give me uh, Hello, and uh, you can also I got the chat room on, so you got some questions or some comments. Uh, write those down, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, Gloria will uh, monitor the broadcast, and also she's monitoring the chat room. Uh, today I'm going to do uh, a little, not a lesson, but just a demonstration here of uh, how to start and how to begin a, a painting. And I thought that would just be appropriate. Uh, I, I was out... Uh, working with some plain air uh, last weekend, and uh, I looked around, and I said, wow, this is an interesting little place. Maybe I can just start from the beginning and uh, just show and talk about how do we begin a painting. So it, it's, uh, it's new every time you try a painting. It's never, never the same. So uh, the two things that uh, I guess as a watercolor artist has to think about, number one is uh, what is the subject or what is the thing you're trying to, to paint, and uh, what is your message? Uh, and the other thing is, uh, how are you going to paint it? Because in watercolor, we have to be very careful about uh, what if we're going to save any white paper uh, or any of the transparent colors. We don't want to block those out with the darker, muddy colors. So those are the things, uh, two things you have to think about in the very beginning. So uh, let me go to my uh, overhead camera. I got I got some uh, uh, some other things to show you. Now this is a this is a photograph I took last weekend uh, when I was out on plain air. And, uh, and this is what gave me the inspiration about this uh, uh, demonstration today. I looked out there. I said, wow, that, that's, be, that's an interesting area. I said, uh, what, what do I want to say about that? Well, number one, uh, I really like these little, row, these little row of white buildings, especially this one right here. So that's going to be my main message here is I'm going to make this white building really be the, the, most, the star of the show right here uh, because this was an overcast day. You can see the clouds up here. But at one time, the sun came out and, and shone on top of this side of this building. It really got really nice and bright. So that's what I'm going to emphasize today. So that's, this is my reference photograph. And uh, I did, a, uh, I did a, a design drawing here from that photograph. And I eliminated, eliminated all the uh, extraneous elements. If you go back to the photograph, you see I took out all the all the extra poles and so forth, and took out some of the other details, uh, the sign over here, etc. So I kept the main ingredients here, uh, the tree line, the, the buildings, uh, and, the, and the foreground, which is the water. Okay, So that, that's my design plan I'm going to go by. Now, my photograph and design plan are located in my Fun with Watercolors page on my website. So you go to my website, everestwatercolors.com, and I have a link there on my navigation bar up in the top left of my website and it will take you to uh, fun with watercolors and in there you can see this photograph and you can see this drawing you can download both of these and uh, I, I, re I uh, recommend uh, and I kind of invite you to paint along with me uh, do a painting like this and uh, go through the steps I'm going through and post them on uh, Facebook I have a Facebook page also uh, that, I sh that I show there fun with watercolor uh, Everest watercolors art group on the Facebook, uh, and you can download your uh, your painting, and uh, I can look at it and give you some comments and, and have a conversation about it. So the purpose of today is to show you how I start a painting, but also to help you get started on, on one of your paintings. Okay, uh, so the next step I do, once I do a drawing and so forth, get a design, that, that, the next thing I do is I do a, I do a little value plan. I figure out where the darks are going to be, and this is the darkest area over here around this this, this white building. So this is where, I, and the other areas are going to be a little less a little less darker than that. And I'm going to add another element here. I'm going to add a sailboat here in the foreground to give a little more interest to the foreground, because the foreground in the photograph was, uh, if you look at the photograph, there really isn't much going on here, just water and maybe some reflections. So I I decided to add a little sailboat, and there are sailboats that dock up here all the time on the waterway. Uh, and I got, uh, I just I just have a, a photo reference here of a sailboat, so I just have a, a silhouette here. So I use that kind of as, a, as a, uh, an incentive here, or just give me a little reference point here to use this, use that in my, my uh, 
my painting, okay? And I may not leave it black. I'll probably make it white when I finish off because I want it to reflect this, this color over here. Okay, so those are kind of the planning steps. Uh, after I get the photograph and I've decided what I want to do and how I want to, how I want to do it, uh, the next thing I do is I, I plan out my colors. So let's go back to the photograph. It was an overcast sky, a little gray, but that's, it was a little bit of blue up here. There's blue, some blue peeking through the clouds, but most of it was a gray. So I'm going to use uh, uh, cerulean blue, but I'm going to mix it with Payne's gray. So it'll give me a nice gray color, a bluish gray color, which will match that sky. And I'm going to use the same color down here in the water. Those two colors will come from this little mix right here. That's cerulean blue and uh, Payne's gray. Here's my cerulean blue in my palette right here on the upper left. Uh, then on the, on, the, on the background area, which is the trees, I'm, primarily I'm going to use uh, Hooker's Green and uh, Payne's Gray also because I want to dull that color down. So that's a mixture of Payne's Gray, I mean uh, Hooker's Green, which is down on the, on the bottom right of my palette. And I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray in with that to give me a, dark, uh, give me a, a, a darker mix of green. Of green. And there'll, be, there'll have different shades that are going across there. It's not all the same. There'll be different values that I'll use across there. Then I have another mixture here where I have a burnt sienna and a Payne's gray. And that'll give me a dull, gray, a dull brown. And there are some little brown areas in here. Some, so there are some uh, brown trees and reddish looking trees back here. So I'm gonna, and again, that'll give me a little variety in the background. So I've got Payne's gray mixed in with three of these colors, the blue, the green, and the brown. I'm also gonna, this, I mixed up uh, yellow lemon and burnt sienna down here. I mean, excuse me. Yellow lemon and Payne's gray down here. That's going to give me a light green, which I'm going to use here in the middle ground here in front of these buildings. So in all my mixes, I mixed a little bit of Payne's gray in each one of these mixes uh, to give me that dull, duller looking color. Because the palette color, the lemon yellow, is very bright. Uh, even the burnt sienna has got a bright color to it, a reddish brown. So I put a little bit of Payne's, Payne's gray to tone that down. Uh, but also in my palette I'm going to use today, I'm going to use a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. These are my, these are my accent colors, which I'll put in some areas of the painting. So maybe the tree trunks uh, in some other areas. So that's, that's my palette setup. This is my palette layout. And these are the colors I'm going to be using in the painting today. So along with the drawing, along with the, with the planning and what you're going to put in the painting, you also have to plan out the colors and, and how you're going to paint those. That's really the second stage. Uh, now the, the tools I use, of course, is the paint brushes. Uh, these are Holbein brushes here. I have a, a three quarter inch flat Holbein. This is uh, synthetic, synthetic uh, bristles. Uh, this is a half inch flat Holbein. And this is a number four rigger. Okay, those three brushes there. And then I'm going to start out with, uh, get, uh, I'm going to use the Hake brush. Uh, this is a small hake, and also use a large hake brush uh, to wet the paper, and also this will be doing the texture of the trees up here. All right, so that's my tools I'm going to be using. I'll put that aside right now. Okay. We have a comment. All that, right. Uh, like the explanation of your color mixtures. Well, good. I, that's uh, that's pretty important because uh, you know you have a lot of colors on a palette. I try I try to minimize the palette down to the colors I'm going to use, but then the mixtures are very important because. Each color you can mix with many other colors and make a different variety. It's like a recipe for uh, whatever you're making. So, uh, okay, I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to show you something here. Uh, this is, now instead of using, I, use, I generally use my uh, watercolor paper that I have in sheets. But here I'm going to use a, a, nine, a 9 by 12 block of Strathmore watercolor. It's 140 pound. It's 9 by, it's 9 by 12 inches. And it comes in a block form. It's a watercolor block. And I really like this for my plain air. I take this on plain air when I go out and paint and so forth. So I wanted to show you this. This is a Strathmore watercolor, uh, 9 by 12. It's, a, it's archival. For, it's a 140 pound. And it's 9, nine inches by 12 inches. So I'm going to turn this. Uh, I'm going to use, a for, I'm gonna use the uh, landscape format. And I don't need the colors. I don't need the uh, color scheme anymore. I already know what it is. Uh, and so I've transferred the drawing here to this uh, this block. You see the drawing very very lightly drawn on the paper. Okay. 
So I'm using a 9 by 12 format size uh, for the painting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sky and the water all at the same time. So I'm going to wet the brush. Uh, I'm using the uh, I'm using the large hake. I'm going to make sure that's clean. So when I use the hake, I use a towel and I, I wet the brush and then I squeeze it out on a towel and it'll keep it nice and dry. Uh, this is pronounced hake. It's a, it's a uh, Japanese brush and uh, a lot of people will, will call it, I've, I've also called it the hake once in a while, but really it's a hake, Japanese. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper and I'm going to start the sky. Then I'll go right down, uh, I can go right on down to the top of the, over the top of the trees because I'm just going to wet the paper so I'm not going to hurt the trees. And uh, I don't have to worry about uh, taping this paper down because it's in a block form so it'll stay in place where it is. So I'll pre-wet the paper here for the sky. And I'm also going to go down and uh, gonna, I'm going to wet the, I'm going to wet the area for the, for the water. That way we've got almost uh, two thirds of the painting done. <laughs> With a big sky and a big water, uh, there isn't much left to do. Oh, it's all in the details. Okay. All right, so that's, the part, that's part of the planning thing is how, how are you going to paint? How are you going to paint? What tools are you going to use? Uh, what, uh, what sequence are you going to paint in? So those are kind of the things you have to go through in your planning stage. So I really have this all written down in steps. The first thing, if I have step one, I'm going to put the sky and the water in. So I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use a three-quarter inch flat brush. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with the, uh, I'm going, to I'm going to put the Payne's Gray. I'm going to start with a light, a light mix of Payne's Gray because I want, I want the gray color to be up there, number one. So I'm going to paint the gray in. And I can judge the value here. And I'm going to go right down over the top of the, right over the top of the edge of these, uh, the, uh, the, the tree line. I can go over the top. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to be painting over that anyway because this is a lighter value. If I have a lighter value and I'm going to go over it with a darker value, then I can paint over that section. And I'm not going to leave any whites here, so uh, if I had clouds in the sky, white clouds, I might leave some white paper, but there was no white clouds, so I'm going to, this is going to be a gray, a gray area, starting out, a base coat of gray, down over the treetops, Okay, and I could use a bigger brush to do this, but I decided to use the, the, the three-quarter inch because a, a nine by twelve uh, size painting is uh, it's good a little, little bit faster. All right, now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that cerulean blue, just a little bit, just a touch of it on my brush, and I'm going to put that I'm going to put that through on top of that gray, and that will that'll bring a little color in there besides the the gray color. So instead of having a gray sky, because it, it was overcast, but there was a little bit of blue coming through, so it was a bluish gray is what it was. So that's why I mixed in a little bit of that cerulean in with the, uh, uh, now I'm looking back and forth because I got a glare here from the overhead lighting, so I'm looking both sides here to make sure I got a, a pretty good wash going on here. All right, so that's a nice little wash. And now down in the, uh, and we'll let that dry. And I'm checking the paper to make sure I got it covered. I don't want I didn't I don't want any white showing up here. I don't want to cover either gray or blue. So I'm going back and checking. I'm looking at it from a different angles all the time. Okay, that's pretty well covered. All right, now we're going to cover the uh, we're going to cover the water now. I'm going to use that same gray color down here in the water. And I think what I'll do here is I'll make this a little bit lighter than the sky area because it was a reflections from the sun. The sun was up. Uh, it came through. It peeked through once in a while, but it was 90% was covered with uh, 
uh, with clouds. Uh, fortunately, it was no, it wasn't raining, so it was just a just a cloudy day. But sometimes you take advantage of that. as an artist. You ha you want to capture a different mood, or uh, get a, a different idea how to paint something. So you just take what uh, what nature gives you, and uh, that's what you do when you do a plein air. You just take what nat nature gives you and work with it. And sometimes you come out with uh, very interesting results, and different results. Okay. So right now I'm going to mix up, take a little bit of cerulean. I'm going to re reflect the water is reflecting the sky, so I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of blue in here. A little bit of blue in the water give the reflection from the sky. It'll be this, basically the same color, maybe a little lighter in the water. And remember, watercolor will, will dry will dry much lighter too. It dries about forty percent lighter than what you see when it's wet. So even though it may look darker when you put it down on the paper, it lightens up as you go along. I'm making sure the paper is covered, and it is. Okay. All right, now we're going to let that kind of dry a little bit there, and I'll get ready for the next la layer. The, layer. the next layer I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the background trees. So that's my next part of my plan. Once I do the sky and water, I'm going to let that dry. And uh, I may have to blow dry just a little bit because I'm going to be painting over in this section. But in the meantime, I can get the water, I can get the paint mixed up. So what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of uh, Hooker's green, and you can tell from the palette this is a very it's it's a not a bright green, but it's a, a very green green. It's a beautiful color. I love this. I love Hooker's green. It's a nice dark green, but it's a little bit too. Uh, too bright for the painting today because the, the painting is a little bit overcast. So I'm going to tone this down. I'll get this started here a little bit. And I'm going to tone this down now. A little bit of Payne's gray. Now I'm now mixing in with Payne's gray now. And I want to get a. I want to get a nice. I need a nice big puddle here. So I'm going to be covering a lot of area. more green and it's going to be a, a dark value so I'm, I'm darkening it up with a little bit more Payne's gray I want, to, I want to have a nice dark background here okay and uh, so what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll blow dry this section here which I'm going to paint over so let me get my uh, hair dryer So what we've done is uh, we've done the uh, the sky and the water. I pre-wet it with uh, just water, and then I paint it over with uh, a mixture of Payne's gray and cerulean blue. That gives me that blue-gray mixture, the blue-gray overcast. So I'm really trying to get this dry right here, where the where I'm going to put the trees. And it's pretty dry. It dries, it dries pretty fast. Okay. All right. All right. So I got the uh, I got the green mix up here. I got the green started, and uh, I think what I'll do is uh, let me test out the color. So I always have a test sheet. You can see there it's a nice dark green. And I may put a little bit more, a little more, a little more Payne's gray in there. So I, want, I want it to be a, a, dar a darker, not darker, but duller. Okay, now that's a nice dark green. Okay, all right. So, so I use a test sheet of paper to test the color before I put it on the, before I put it on the paper. Okay, now load up my brush, and I'm going to press the brush down. I get it nice and I want to get it pressed out a little bit, so I, I want to get it to be textured wise. So now I'm going to go in with the, with the edges of the brush. And I'm going to get a, a rough edge on this trees. And so the, the hockey brush, uh, the hockey brush, hockey brush, excuse me. The hockey brush does a nice job on giving me a nice rough edge. 
and uh, I'm making the texture of this tree uh, pop out. And so this will be a starting layer. I'm, I'm going to go back in uh, after, you know, as I go along. Again, I, I study the color, and I may want to go back in and darken up something. But here, at least I got the starting point. Now, very important here when you do trees or any kind of vegetation is make sure you have a variety. Have the edges, edges all different, and uh, you want to have rough edges, maybe some sky peeking through, and that's what you want. You want to have some uh, texture, but you also want to have uh, variation. Uh, now I think what I'll do now is I will um, mix up another color. So when I mix up a color with this, I've got to take the squeeze out the brush. Now I'm going to mix up just a touch of burnt sienna. Just a touch of burnt sienna. Put a little bit of Payne's Gray in with that. I want to, I want to dull it down. That's too much, too much Payne's Gray. It's okay. I'll use it somewhere else. Get that Burn sienna in there. Okay, now I got the burnt sienna now mixed in with the with the Payne's gray. Now I'm gonna this little line, this little tree line over here. Now I'm gonna put in, I'll squeeze the brush, push the brush down, and get me a rough a rough edge. And I want a tree line in here with a little bit of brown in it, just a touch of brown. And that that way it'll break up the uh, flow of color. So I don't have all the same color everywhere. And you can you can make these actually when I, when you do a tree line you can make as long as it's dark you can make any color you want. Uh, it, I'm just using brown just to do, just to get a variety in here. Uh, a dark brown. I may I may make, mix some more colors in over top of this when I get the, when I put in another layer a small layer because I want to darken up some sections of this. I just want to get a variety of colors and a variety of strokes across this area. Uh, and I may pick up a little bit of green now, just a little bit of green on the brush, and mix that in with that brown. Because I want to, it's, it's kind of a, uh, I don't want it to be pure brown. It's like a, a further back tree. It's more in shadow because of this tall tree here. So I'll put more brown in it. But now I'm going to stick a little bit, a little bit of green in with that brown. Give me a brownish green. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to move over to the other side, and I'm going to get now I'm going to mix in a little another mixture. I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue. And I said I'd use ultramarine blue again, but I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to mix any. Uh, I may mix a little bit of Bain's gray, just a little bit, but I'm going to mix that in with the green now. I'm going to have a real dark green. So I mixed blue in with green. I was going to make a much darker green mixture. And I'm going to put some of that over here. So I'm going to go in now and put some darker, some darker accents here in this uh, this first tree I've started. The interior of the tree would have some more shadow from the branches and leaves and so forth. So I'll put a little bit of texture on that. And over here I'm going to do another tree uh, on this side. So this has got more blue in it. It's got more blue in this mixture here. So I've gone from. Uh, the green and the and the Payne's gray. Now I'm going to the brown and the Payne's gray. Now I'm going to the blue and the Payne's gray. Touch of a little touch of Payne's gray. The Payne's gray really does a good job of knocking down the the, the color. It makes it a, a lot duller looking, which is what I want. I don't want a bright color on in these trees. They're going to be they're going to be overcast. Put some over in shadow. But primarily, they're they're a green color. I mean, it's it's uh, the foliage is you know it's just early summer, so the trees are covered with green leaves. So it's going everything is going to be green, but they don't have to be the same color green. So I'm making everything a little different. I'm gonna bring a little bit of that mixture over here. Put down on the bottom here now. The bottom area is more is more shadow. So I'm borrowing some of that color and bring it over here. Make this tree a little darker on the side. Okay, and then uh, 
go back to my first mix over here of this uh, this Payne's gray and a little bit of that green I'm going to go into this far tree over here on the this one's not very important it's just a, a borderline on the edge of the painting over here so I'm just going to stick in this color here it's a uh, I'm using uh, Booker's green a little bit of Payne's gray in it to dull it down okay all right, now the big here in the center here, around the center of interest, uh, I'm going to use a little bit more of a hooker's green. A little bit more hooker's green. So here I'm going to put a little more, now here I'm going to give a little more color to this tree here, because this is the real showboat right here. This is the show, This is the tree that's got the major interest I have. This tree was... Uh, not the biggest tree, but it was a tree that was closest to this white building, and I really liked it, the way it showed up. Nice shape. And it had, had some branch holes. It had some bird holes. I call them bird holes. But the, the way the, way the uh, sky shows through the branches, between the branches. So we'll show a little bit more of that here. A little, a little more show off here on this tree here. This is more of a... Uh, I'm decorating this tree a little differently so that it will show off a little different. I'm trying to make each tree a little bit different, a little different statement for each one. Uh, a slightly different, uh, not a little, a little different technique, but but main, mainly a difference in color. I'm going to go back on this tree here and put a little more, a little more definition in here. Don't want those trees to look flat. I want them to have a little bit of uh, texture in them because they're leaves. So I'm going back in with the same brush load of paint and adding a little more paint in there, okay? Just to, make, to keep the texture going on inside of these branches. Building up texture, adding a little definition. Okay, all right. So that's gonna, that pretty, pretty well finishes Pretty well uh, finishes off the tree line, uh, of at least getting the outside of it. And uh, work on this one up here just a little bit more. Get a little more dark in here. A little more shadow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we call them, I call them bird holes. I call them sky holes. Sky holes probably is what you're going to find in most art books. Sky holes. Uh, that's where the sky comes through the trees, through the branches. And you want to leave a few of those around. Give you some interest. Okay, now my next step was the, uh, of course, the middle ground is more important. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to let that dry now. I'm going to go ahead and, and work on the, uh, the grass. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the, uh, you know, take the flat brush, the half-inch flat brush. And I'm going to mix up... Uh, I'm going to say it, make it looks up lemon yellow. So this this is an interesting combination. I'm going to mix up a little lemon yellow, and I'm going to pick a, a touch of Payne's gray in with that. That'll give me a green color. Now I can that mixture, depending on how much yellow I put in there, will, will cover how much, how light, and how dark I want to make it. So I need more yellow now into that mix and add a little bit more water. Okay, so let's start out here. I'm, this is a, mainly right along here is really the horizon line. So I'm going to start right here underneath the buildings here. At the base of the buildings is really the horizon. Now that's from my viewpoint, that was the horizon that I saw right there. It was where the buildings were. The bottom of the buildings was on my horizon, my eye level. So that's what I'm painting in right now. So I'm using a little bit of a mixture of uh, yellow lemon and Payne's gray. It's going to give me a light green. And I'm going to paint around this. Uh, I, I put the sailboat in here. I mentioned that uh, in the beginning. I'm going to put in a sailboat in here. Here's the, here's the shape I'm going to leave in. I'm going to come back with a, a little more detail on this, but I'm going to make this boat, I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to leave, I've got to paint around it now. 
to leave the white paper showing. So that's what a, a watercolor, if you want to, if you want to paint white without using white paint, you, uh, you, you leave the white paper showing. So I want to leave the white paper here. And there's a little sail. The sail uh, storage is on the back of this sailboat. So I'll paint that in separately. But I can come around the top of it. Okay. And then continuing on, uh, then I can go a little bit faster down here now. I'm gonna, once I get past this building here, which is uh, really my center of interest, the building, uh, I'll paint between these. I'm going to paint between these poles now. I got poles here. Uh, they're alongside the waterway. These are these are where the uh, sailboats and boats tie up. Uh, they sometimes they'll park they'll park here for a couple of days and do and resupply their their supplies, food and whatever, food and water, and then. Uh, then they move on, but they'll they'll spend a day or two here tied up all year long. That's most of the time it's in the in the summer, in the spring and fall. Uh, very few sailboats coming through here in the winter time. But uh, this is a very popular place with a lot of sailboats coming through. Coming through the waterway. And I have a lot of I've done a lot of paintings down here, and I've done a, I have a lot of pictures of this area. Just the it's amazing. It changes every day. There's a different view, a different point every day. And then in this ca case here, there's a different uh, change in the weather. The uh, sky was gray and uh, an opportunity here to do a, a different kind of painting. So this, I'm taking my time here because I'm just trying, I want to, these, these aren't, uh, these aren't going to be an important part of the painting, but they, they are part of the painting. I want to paint around them. And there, there's a, uh, also the tree trunk over here I want to paint around. Again, uh, it'll be darker when I finish, but uh, just to preserve a little bit of the white paper. I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll go away at the end, but right now I just want to preserve a little bit of it. And that's, that's the part about watercolor painting, is uh, you want to preserve as much of the white paper as you can that you're going to use. Uh, because it's, it's, it's once you paint over, you can't get it back. It can't get a pure white. It'll be something else other than. So you save it until the very end when you want to get rid of it. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think what I'll do, I'm gonna have to blow dry this. I got it wet up here and wet down here, so I'm gonna blow dry. Then I can do. I can finish off the middle ground. So we're painting off a little bit of darker green in the tree tree area to show a texture of the branches and leaves. And then I went down and mixed a little bit of uh, yellow lemon with uh, the Payne's Gray to give me a light a light green. Now I'm going to modify that a little bit uh, be, before I finish, but right now it gives me the I'm putting the base coat down at this point. So when you start out, this is the first layer. So the first layer or the first application of paint. Uh, the best way to paint is to paint in layers. You put one layer down and let it dry, and you put another layer down uh, to, to uh, complete it. Okay, that's right. It dries pretty fast on this paper. Okay, now I'm going to go in now with. Uh, I think I'll use. Uh, I think I'll use a bigger brush now. I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'll use a three quarter. Now I'm going to put a real dark background here uh, behind these uh, behind these buildings. So I'm going to use it's going to be a real dark green because the, the the trees were green, but it was really dark because of in shadow. So I mixed a little bit of uh, a little bit of Payne's gray in with that. Green and a little bit of ultramarine blue to me even darken it up even some more. Okay, then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to start right here in the, right here in the impact area, right here in the beginning. 
and uh, using a corner of the brush going for detail I use the corner of the brush almost like a round brush I just go in with a corner of the brush and I can I can pretty well cut out a section just like I would with a round brush by using a corner of the brush come down here there's a little little chimney on this on this building I'll leave it on leave that white right now come down this side the other side of uh, other side of the roof is over here and I use the edge of the use the edge of the brush to give me a nice sharp edge and then I'll then I'll use uh, use a little brush stroke here <clears throat> to uh, use just use a little brush stroke here to move the a little a, a row of darker bushes and trees here right behind and also give me some nice contrast okay, so I'm putting a, a nice dark layer in here behind these white buildings now these all all these buildings aren't going to stay white because I'm going to knock some of them down but but right now to get them started to get the shapes done okay then over here I'll paint this uh, from the horizon on up, it was all in shadow behind these buildings over here. Okay, make a little, just checking the edges a little bit to make sure, give a little variety here. Okay, then coming on this side uh, of the building, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint around the tree trunk. So I'll, I'll paint the tree trunk separate. Uh, using the corner of the brush Use the corner of the brush just like like I said before it's like a round brush comes over here like this Get some more dark paint And I'll eliminate I'll eliminate some of this white paper on my next pass over the trees because right now I'm just kind of picking up Now I can pay along here pretty quickly here Across the top of these, uh, next to these poles here. This is all, this is all in shadow, in the background, in the middle ground, or background. This is really the back back part of the middle ground. The middle ground was the trees, these two large trees, and then the buildings, and then the background behind that was a large was the row of trees. So this section here is a section uh, in the middle ground. And it was a little, little interesting little house here. This is not going to be that important because I'm going to, I'm going to tone it down. But it's a little, it was a little, little white building over here. And I'll put, I'll paint some shapes up here of those bushes and so forth. Those tall bushes. And behind this house over here was again shadow. This one section here, just trying to get the edges nice and smooth. Okay. This is about the only in the middle ground, and this little space is here about the only place where any detail is required, just to keep uh, just to keep the edges straight and uh, uh, not cover up anything that's important. So that's the only place you have to be careful is in the middle ground where you, you have your, your subject matter. Other than that. Uh, okay. Now I think what I'll do now is uh, we'll finish off these buildings. What I'm <clears throat> uh, George is, uh, says thank you for the demonstration today. All right. And we're on Twitch. We... Uh, Forgot to mention that, and yes. so Brazen Spirituality is welcoming us, welcoming us to Twitch. Well, good. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for your comments, and uh, hope you enjoy. Subscribe and tell your friends about it.
Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of, uh, let's see, I'll use a small, I can, no, I don't want to use a small brush brush. I guess that works now. I'm using my flat brush. Can you go back to the half inch flat brush? And I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray now. Uh, put a lot of water in it. And I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that water, that uh, this Payne's Gray now I'm going to put on the rooftop. These are little roofs that come over here. So I'm using Payne's Gray up on the rooftop. A little bit in here. And this rooftop on this one. I was going to turn green because the green the green tree is there. It's okay. Sometimes when you do uh, do a section, let the colors kind of run together. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's really the value that's most important. You can be almost any color uh, that you want, but the value, darks and lights, is most important. Okay, I want to pick up, uh, now I'm going to take a thirsty brush now. I'm going to take this brush here, which I took the water out of it, and I'm going to pick up this excess paint right here. You know, this area, this area in here is a lot darker. So this, this building here is in shadow. So I'm going to put a darker, a darker value here. So I'm taking a thirsty brush and I'm picking up... Uh, when the uh, when the paintbrush hits the uh, color next to it, like I did here, it's going to run a little bit. So it run into this color here, and in order to salvage that, uh, I'm picking up the excess moisture, reducing the reducing the value of that color there. Okay, I got to leave that alone for a little. Let it dry. All right, now over here, I'm going to make, I'm going to put this, put this building on, this rooftop over here. Gray rooftop, okay. And for the, uh, the front part of these buildings, they're in chat, those are front, they're front and side. So the front part of it, I'm going to put in, uh, a little, a little uh, value, a little blue for the shadow. So this building here has a little bit of blue in the front. This building over here has a little bit of blue in the front. Those are those are the front sides of the buildings. And this, the sun was the sun was coming from this way, from my left to the right. So these this side here was lit up, and this side over here was lit up. And over, same way with this building back here. This this edge here was blue. So it's in shadow. These were white buildings, so the shadow side of a white building will be uh, will be cooler. So I'm using blue as the cool color. Okay. All right, that's got to dry. There's a little bit. Uh, so if I can pick a little bit more of this paint up over here. So I just wet the brush, dampen the brush, pull this up. Okay. Uh, I can fix that, but I'm going to going to move on. I can fix that part there and this part here. So the next thing I want to do is uh, let's see. I think I'll put the post in. So I'll take the. I mean, this is a number. This is a number uh, six round, which is a Holbein synthetic brush. I'm going to put a little bit of a uh, little bit of burnt sienna. 
with a lot of water. It'll be a very light mix. And I'm just going to put these. I'm just going to put these poles in. So this is a light light brown. That'll take care. Of, that'll take care of those whites of the paper. Then get a little darker, a little darker of that burnt sienna. Put these. Put that on the. This was a large tree here, which was visible. A little brown on that trunk, and a little brown, a little brown back here on this trunk. A little bit of burnt sienna on that one. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to use the rigger now. I'm going to try. I'm going to show you something here. I do all the time. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of that uh, Payne's gray on my rigger. Mixed in with some of that brown, I guess be okay. Yeah, that'd be good. And load the rigger from the side. I roll into I roll in the, in the water mix. That's that's uh, Payne's gray and uh, burnt sienna. And now what I'm going to do is going to paint the uh, the water mark here, a water line across this uh, waterway. So I'm using a rigger brush. And I'm coming right up to the back of that sailboat. And I'm going to move ahead of there. Okay. okay this is the water line along the edge of the waterway. And it's always it's wet there. The water the water's, the water's splashed up against this. So this is this is wet. Uh, there's a there's a wood there's a wood railing that runs along here which is dark. It's always wet. So that's the rough edge. That's the rough edge of the water along there. I can make a little bit more irregular here. So the water, the water is right along the edge of that, right along the edge of that waterway, right there with the poles. I'll put a little more back here. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do, uh, the only, the only, when I when I have a, a problem like this with the with the paint that's run, I'm going to take. I'm gonna make sure it's dry first of all. So I'm gonna make one little one little correction that I see. I'm gonna dry this mix up here. So I'm drying the paint out. So as a demonstration, uh, this is going to show you, I've, I've got a finished painting I'll show you at the end. I, I did one earlier, which uh, was turning out a lot better than this. But just to show you a couple of little things here, I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and paint in over top of this area, which I have a little bit of problem with, with color. So I'm going to put the white back in. It won't be perfectly white, but it'll be lighter than it is right now. That's the only section I have problems with right there. All right, I'll let that let that dry now. I'll dry that. Okay, and everything else is okay. Um, on the sailboat, I'm going to put a little blue sail on that. So the blue sail I'm going to put in there. Uh, usually, the sail will have a cover on it. It could be a white sail inside, but they usually have a cover, a little storage cover that covers the sail. I'm going to paint that blue. With that reason I'm doing that now is because that gives that puts color. This is my impact area or, or, or focal point over in this area. So I'm gonna put a little bit of color in here. I got the uh, the green grass and now I've got the blue from the sailboat. And I'm gonna have the white of the building here in a minute. More white, the white white of the paper. But I'm gonna knock down everything else. 
Uh, also, I'm going to uh, put that brush back there. I'm going to, I'm going to take this smaller brush now, and I'm going to uh, dull some more down here. So I'm going to take that mixture of uh, Payne's gray and a yellow, and I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of adding on here. I'm going to bring it in and dull this section down, even right here, right up to the sailboat area, and then gradually I'm going to slack off, and then over here I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going to pick up that little shadow pattern or darker area. And I'm going to knock this down just a little, just a little bit. I don't want this to be as light as the, the section over here. This is going to be my lightest area. So I'm introducing a little more value over here, a little darker value. As I go away, it's going to get darker. So I want, I want less attention out here in this area. I want more attention over here. So I'm, I'm dulling this down a little bit. Taking away the light, taking away the light color, making a darker, duller color. And going to blend this in as much as I can uh, to make it look more natural. Okay, all right, now, um, I'm going to do one more fix on this. For the darker, the shadow side of this the rooftop is going to be a, lot, a little bit darker, so let's see, that's too dark. The shadow side of this uh, rooftop is over here. This is the shadow side. That's the light side. This is going to be the shadow side over here on this building. This building here really is in shadow completely, so I'm just going to put a, a darker value on top of this building. Also, it'll give me some contrast against this white over here. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm putting everything I can to make that white building really come out. So I'm putting I'm putting dark over here next to that white. I'm gonna leave a hint, I'm gonna leave a hint of a building over here just so there's a there's a edge of the roof to show something back there, but it's not gonna show any detail at all. Okay. But the point is, the dark, the dark is against that light right there. That's the key, right there. And now over here, I'm going to take a light, light gray, and I'm going to knock this down over here. So I'm reducing all the white areas down to a lower intensity. And this last building over here, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on this one also. Knock down the white. It's white, but I'm not, not, it's not going to be as bright as the building by the tree over there. And let's see. What was I going to do with the, the boat? Okay. The last thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to bring the trees together a little bit better than what they are. So I'm going to mix up a uh, this is a palette color. This green is a, this green palette color is all I need to do. Pick this up a little bit of everything, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown. Uh, make it like a dry brush, and then I'm going to go over all this 
to bring all these colors together and also to knock out, to reduce some of the, the white areas possibly. Uh, I'll, leave a, I'll leave a little bit of whites over here on this particular tree here. But the shadow patterns were really dark over here. There wasn't much light down in the bottom. All the light was up here at the top. Knock that down. So I'm really integrating some of these shapes now, making them all more together, which they are. You can't tell. If you look at the picture, you can't tell one tree from the other. It's just a big bunch of evergreens and other treetops back there. So by just painting over that with a, with a, a neutral color, which was a mixture of everything on the palette, just kind of close that in all together. And the only thing that really should show up now is the white of this building over here. Now the little sailboat, uh, I want to, I want to, what I want to do with the water, I think to keep the, to make the sailboat show up a little better, is I want to take the, the flat brush and I'm going to, let's say, let me clean up a little bit of this palette. Just a hair, just a little bit. Now I'll mix up a little bit of a uh, yeah, brush. Got to keep the brushes clean. And the palette clean. And let's see, I'm going to mix up a little bit of a uh, little bit of blue, I think. A little bit of blue mixed in with that Payne's gray. Just keeping that gray color again, that bluish gray. Okay, I think that'll work. And what I'm going to do on the water now is going to give the give the movement of water. So I'm going to move across here with uh, waves and uh, a movement of water that's going to go moving along. And I'm going to leave uh, we'll leave the sh the reflection of this boat, this white boat over here. I'm going to leave the, I'm going to leave the reflection in the water so it shows it off. a little movement in the water. And I think the last thing I can do is uh, put a little bit, I don't want to use that color too much. I think what I'll do, I think I'll use the, use the paint's gray. I think the paint's gray. I don't want. To, I want something to show the bottom of the boat, but I don't want to have anything in there that's uh, that's really a high color. So I'm going to just put the bottom of the boat here a little bit darker edge for the bottom of the boat as it hits the water. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do. Uh, okay, about one more thing I'm going to put on. I think I could add a little shadow here to the tree. A little bit of, I put up a little bit of Payne's gray, put a shadow, put a shadow on these poles. Shadow side. Uh, I can put some reflection in the water here of these poles. I put some reflection. I'll pick up a tissue. I don't want it too dark, but I can put reflections here in the water. Down in the water it gives it a little more, a little more uh, dimension here. Uh, uh, I've got a lot of horizontals going, so I'll break it up with some, some verticals. Now, the last thing I want to do is add in that little sailboat uh, stack. So I'm going to take the, uh, I think I'll use this brush here. I've got some white paint on my brush. This number six round. 
and I'm going to, uh, I better use the right here. I'm going to use the rigger, load it up with white paint. And I'm going to put in the mask. There's a, I'll put a white mask here. Put the white mask in. And a little reflection here in the water, just a little bit. Reflect that a little bit there, just a just a hint. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's going to complete what I did. Now, remember what I start out with. The two things you do, you say, okay, what what kind of, what kind of story am I going to tell? Well, the story here was the sun shining on this little white building, with that sun really hitting this side over here, and everything else I wanted to block out. So that was a that's the message, or that's the thing I wanted to say about this particular painting. The other thing about how do you paint it? Well, I started with a minimal a minimal palette colors. But I wanted to capture the, the overcast sky and then the background trees and then this building with all the little details about the, uh, uh, the grass and so forth. That's about it. Okay, let me show you. Let me put a mat around this. We'll show it off with a mat. Okay. So that's a uh, 9 by 12. Da 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 da. And then I want to show you one I did earlier yeah now uh, I also wanted to show you I, I had I painted this one on Strathmore watercolor this is the watercolor paper it's a 9 by 12 pad of 140 pound watercolor so I, I have the watercolor in a pad and I have it in the in the, the block 9 by 12 okay this is the one I did earlier for practice So that was to get me warmed up for the uh, the painting today. Okay, and I can, you can move this around a little bit. Bring that down about right there. Okay. So that completes my uh, demonstration of how to get started on a painting and where to begin. Okay, let's go to my uh, let's go to my main camera. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for uh, watching my video today, and uh, I hope you got something out of that about beginning a painting because every painting we start with. Basically, it starts out with the same idea. What am I? What's the message I'm trying to paint? And then the next step is, especially in watercolor, is how am I going to paint it? What steps am I going to take? So I hope this demonstration today helps you a little bit about thinking about that, how you can get started on a painting. So I appreciate you watching in. Uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a like and uh, pass on the word to uh, your friends. And uh, I'll be on again later today at, at 7.30. I'm going to do uh, simply... Drawing with Everett at 7.30 this evening. Same place, same time. So I'll be on Facebook, and uh, I'll be on uh, YouTube, and uh, LinkedIn. So uh, I'm going to be doing, on drawing, I'm going to be doing, how, how do you proportion the face? Drawing in the face. We've gone, we've, this is the seventh episode, so we've come along quite a ways so far, but now we're going to get in, into describing how to do a little bit more uh, dimension, a little bit more... Uh, more drawing techniques. Okay, so uh, I'm coming back again next week on Thursday at uh, 2 p.m. So uh, we'll see you then. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's 7, that's 2, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tonight, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So we'll, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.